Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles. I'm Seth Macy, who you've probably never heard of. And as always, I am joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Yes, Seth, as always, because <laughs> you're here every single week, as you just noted. <laughs> I'm an automaton. I just read what they tell me to read. I am also joined by Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation podcast, Podcast Beyond. Hello, Jonathan. If I knew that, I would have rewritten the intro to the show very differently. But uh, Seth, it's, <laughs> it's good to see you as always. Likewise, likewise. Uh, we are less than a week away from Gamescom 2021, where we should be getting a slew of next gen game announcements. We know Xbox has a show on Tuesday, August 24th at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. So that is the perfect place to start ryan what do you predict we're going to be seeing from xbox next week first and foremost is the release date for halo infinite we still don't have that yet we've just been given the you know fall slash holiday 2021 window <laughs> so unless that's changed and we have no reason to think it has changed at this point in time we just got the first multiplayer flight test which a lot of you out there probably participated in uh, everybody seemed to super enjoy that so uh, the game is coming and it is probably time. This is this would be a good opportunity for them to say exactly uh, when this fall we're going to get that. Plus, uh, their next biggest game of the fall, Forza Horizon 5. It got a lot of stage time at E3 this year and justifiably so. It looked incredible. It won the Game of the Show award from the collective group of media critics of which IGN is a part. So I think we'll see some more gameplay there. Uh, and then... You start to get into some things I think that that we haven't really thought about or even potentially seen in a lot of these cases for a while that it is probably time to get an update on. In the case of Age of Empires 4, that's a game that has an October release date and we haven't seen a ton of that. So I would expect a gameplay showcase of some kind there during the conference. Psychonauts 2, that's out the week of Gamescom. So, uh, you know, maybe we won't see it because it's out, but maybe we'll get a launch trailer or something there. And mm -hmm. then Sable, which is one of the, the sort of triple I indie titles that Microsoft has <laughs> an exclusive deal on uh, that, that's out in September. We should uh, probably see that if I had to guess. Two more I'm going to give you, and I promise I'll stop talking. And that <laughs> is, these are the two that are just straight MIA. That's like, well, maybe this is a good opportunity for Microsoft to finally give us an update on those. The first one is Bright Memory Infinite, which was the standout game of Microsoft's very first next-gen showcase. It was that third-party one that they did back in May of 2020. So oh, a thousand was, years ago. Yes. Yeah, we're pushing a year and a half uh, since we've really gotten a proper showing of that. And is it coming out this year? They had indicated it was at the beginning of the year. Plans, of course, can change. The pandemic's tough for all developers. so. If that's still coming soon, I would expect to see something on that. And then finally, I promise I'm almost done talking. Uh, another MIA game that we really haven't heard about in a long time, Crossfire X, which is the sort of complete version of that popular first-person shooter. It's very counter strike -y. There was a limited beta of it on Xbox that I participated in last year on the multiplayer side. And then Remedy of... Control and Max Payne and Alan Wake fame is doing a single player campaign there, which I took a hands off demo of last year as well. We just haven't we've heard nothing about Crossfire <laughs> in, a, in over a year. So that was originally supposed to be out in 2020. And now we're nearing the end of 2021 without a word on that. So uh, that's the list. I think there's there's enough there where it's expected stuff, maybe some stuff that's it's a little unexpected in terms of things that have been in the dark for a while. So I'm hoping for a good uh, a good hour or so from Microsoft. Yeah, the upside to holding off on so many announcements is I could just be banking them all for Gamescom and then just wow us all. What, real quick, I know you said you were done talking, but what are you personally, what prediction are you most hoping comes true? Well, I, I, I got to get that Halo release date. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my <laughs> personal most anticipated yeah. games of the year. And it's also, I mean... It, you've got, there's a lot of first person shooter competition this year. And I'm not saying that Halo can't stand up to them, but I hope it doesn't end up being just like a traffic jam of AAA <laughs> first person shooters. We've got, uh, I mean, Call of Duty is always, we, that's getting announced. Uh, oh, yeah. What I guess actually it'll have been announced by the time this show airs. So 
probably with the usual release date of late October or the beginning of November there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Battlefield 2042, that's out in, I believe, late October. So is Halo going to, are they ready to just kind of jump ahead of those guys and do like a late September thing like Halo 3 did back in 2007? Or are they going to push like to maybe closer to Thanksgiving just to get away from from those Mm. games? So. Yeah, I just want to know when I can finally play Halo because it's been six years since the last mainline Halo game. And I am just so eager to see if Infinite is going to be awesome because I very badly want it to be. Yeah, I think I think everybody is right there with you. Uh, Jonathan, as of this taping, PlayStation has not announced a presence at Gamescom. But uh, what do you think they could or should show this year? I mean, you know, first I'll say I'm glad Ryan had so much to say about Xbox because <laughs> I don't have that much to say about PlayStation for, for Gamescom. We're unfortunately in a weird place where, at least in the near future, we know PlayStation has the next God of War, Horizon Forbidden West, and the next Gran Turismo. We know those are all coming at some point, probably within the next year, I think is safe to say, uh, depending on when Gran Turismo and God of War hit. Uh, They still haven't officially delayed Horizon. I know that was a big story a week or two ago, but uh, PlayStation themselves hasn't come out and said anything about the Horizon Forbidden West release date bumping out of 2021. Uh, I say that now, of course, probably between taping and airing, they'll say that. But, um, you know, saying having a delay like that and softening the blow maybe with a trailer for Horizon, I, I certainly wouldn't mind if something like that uh, showed up in, in Keeley's show, for example. But I honestly don't expect a lot of major PlayStation announcements to come this year, at least not from the first parties. Mm. PlayStation has very, very clearly in the last couple of years decided to do things on their own terms. Uh, and so I don't feel like they are beholden to, you know, announcing whatever's next for Insomniac or announcing the next game from Team Asobi or, you know, any of their other studios. I don't think they feel the need to do that at Gamescom, right or wrong. I, I don't think they're going to necessarily do that, but I could still see them having a presence because uh, back at uh, Jeff Keighley's opening night live, which was E3 adjacent, if not, you know, it wasn't officially E3, but it was right before it. Um, PlayStation did take part in a smaller way. They they showed a couple of indies off. They announced the sequel to Assault and Sanctuary, talked about Chicory coming out that day, uh, and then they announced a partnership with Deviation Games, which is a, a newer studio working with them to exclusively publish their first project. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we see another project like that. Uh, Herman Holst recently, uh, you know, within the last few months, talked about how they really are emphasizing these third party exclusive partnerships that they're doing. They have more in the works. Uh, they have, you know, a whole suite of PlayStation 5 games coming up that they haven't announced under the PlayStation Studios banner. And so to announce another partnership like that with a smaller studio made up of veterans of the game industry, that feels like the type of announcement we may see from PlayStation at a show like mm. this. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have another like that at Keeley's show, maybe a couple indie spotlights here and there. Uh, but other than a Horizon, you know, trailer with a softened release date delay, I don't really see them using Gamescom as the place to debut a brand new first party game or to be the first debut of God of War. I feel like PlayStation probably thinks they could hold a state of play whenever they want to to do that God of War reveal and kind of own the conversation right. and have all the space and not have to compete with everything else happening at Gamescom. So. I, I think we'll see a little bit of a presence from them, but I wouldn't expect a ton. Yeah, uh, I don't know if, if you're like me. Uh, I love uh, when PlayStation does a direct. It's it's nice. It's succinct. I kind of miss seeing them around at these yeah. shows. So um, I, I, I I love them being a part of it. You know, there is the the joy of having everyone go back to back to back in a show like this. I think PlayStation has just kind of decided to chart their own path with the way they do presentations these days. And uh, it's something we actually talked about on podcast beyond this week is uh there's a lot of ups and downs of of silence and then they'll speak for like a week and then we don't hear from playstation for a little bit but you know the ps5s are selling as fast as they can ratchet and clank and returnal are two like i would say probably game of the year favorites for a lot of people it's not like sony's been not doing anything right i just don't think they feel like they need to be at the show and whether or not that's the right move you know, we'll 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 see as we go down the line. But it is nice to have them be a part of everything for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh they're they're doing pretty well 
so they can kind of call the shots right now. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Doing okay. But uh, let's talk about some of these third-party games. We know that Ubisoft is going to be there. So what do you think? Far Cry 6, we're going to see some more of that. We don't, I believe, have a hard release date on that, or am I in do. Oh, we do. Yeah, I believe okay. it's October 6th. I'll have to fact check it real quick while you're talking, but I, I know it's early. <laughs> Thanks for doing my job. Uh, for me, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe it's the first week of October because we're planning. I, I know we were like, oh, we need to look out for upcoming releases. I, I feel like Far Cry 6 is a given. They've definitely not yeah. been shy about showing that game as well. Uh, it, it's something that Ubisoft has been trotting out quite a bit at all of their presentations and, and any big uh, Ubisoft connects or E3 related stuff. So it feels like this being the last big show before yeah. it comes out. It feels like a given. That we'll see it that was there. close. It's October 7th. One day. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. I feel like uh, Far Cry 6 has been sort of the, the go-to game at every show. Like here, here's a really uh, awesome looking game that everyone can be happy about. It's called Far Cry 6. Uh, what about Avatar? Are you excited to visit the Navi? Wow. Max Scoville is. Max Scoville <laughs> is very excited, but uh, I guess I, I think we'll see anything about it. it. Yeah, no. I wouldn't expect it just yet. I, I feel like they're, a show like Gamescom gives them a good chance to focus on their upcoming fall slate. So I think we might sure. see stuff like that, Writers Republic and whatnot. But knowing Avatar is a little further away, I feel like they might save the big deep dive for a little bit further. Um, mm. but you know, Avatar obviously does have huge appeal around the world it wasn't just a hit in north america so i in international game show isn't the worst place to do it but that yeah I, I feel like it it might just be a little too early to see more of that game it was the biggest movie of all time which is unbelievable to me to this day but enough about avatar we got other gamescom partners uh activision what do you think we're gonna see there i, I can't possibly imagine what activision could bring into the show from the deep portfolio, of what, <laughs> what do you choose? Uh, yeah, they've got a. They've they've never waited this long to announce Call of Duty before, so yeah. it seems a given we're going to see something from that. Uh, so that's I would that's the one that's like the, the surest bet, like the Vegas odds. It's uh, <laughs> you know you, you got to put up a lot of money to win anything in that betting scenario. <laughs> Right. Uh, EA is also going to be there. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think EA's got in store for us uh, other than like a uh, FIFA game, maybe? Well, yeah, of, of course, definitely uh, FIFA. I think we'll have a pretty big presence at Gamescom. But yeah, I, I feel like this is, again, similar to, you know, Call of Duty and speaking to Ryan's point about the fall having a lot of big shooters. I feel like this is another great opportunity to highlight uh, Battlefield. It was such a, a big mm. game. Uh, for them during their EA Play Live, and and it's been doing so well, uh, sort of across the board every time they debut a new trailer. So that feels like a given uh, to see here. I, I also wouldn't be surprised if we see maybe a couple of the smaller games coming out, like in the EA Originals portfolio. Uh, Knockout City, I think it's been a bit of a surprise hit for them, and I know like they either just recently or, or are about to go into a new season of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see updates there. Uh, Lost in Random from Zoink is out in the beginning of September, and that game looks really, really cool from the original side. Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see a couple smaller things from them as well there, too. Great, yeah. Uh, we also have Bandai Namco and Sega, our other Gamescom partners. And uh, I think Bandai has a game that people are interested in, but I can't be sure about that. I can't put your finger on it. Yeah, uh, I yeah, can't no, put my finger no on that. No one can guess. Oh, no. He, got, uh, he got Elden Ring for the Z3 thing, so it's, uh, there's a reasonable chance that and get something else at his opening night live, which will be airing live on IGN. So, and it's coming out in January as well. So, you know, there's only so much. Right. Not that Elden Ring, I think, needs the promotion. I think it's been doing pretty well on its own when there was nothing to show. That's, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I think with this being such a small lead up, we really only have that four minute ish trailer of footage to go from it. I, I do think if they did a deep dive, they could probably even do something where you know they do a, a developer interview and just show a couple snippets. It would it would be huge. Everyone yeah. is so excited for that game. They can show whatever they want, and I think it'll go over very well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you both. Let's move on to the poll results from last week's, or excuse me, two weeks ago's poll, which was which Unreal Engine Five game are you most excited for? And at the uh, commanding lead was Bioshock Four with oh, wow. 29 percent. Yes, cool. but the the follow up bit of a surprise. I didn't expect to see this. 22.9% of respondents said they are most excited for Gears of War 6, which is kind of a, kind of a big deal there as an exclusive, uh, followed by Dragon Quest 12, Hellblade 2, uh, 
at the very end there. So uh, I'm personally, I love Dragon Quest. So uh, I'm looking forward to Dragon Quest. But uh, Ryan, what, what game are you looking forward to out of that? It's uh, a good batch. group. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I'm a little bummed that Hellblade didn't get a little more love. But then again, Microsoft has only shown it once. So I think <laughs> once it just doesn't have a lot of awareness. I mean, it was the first Xbox Series X game shown back at the Game Awards 2019. So, yeah, I think that's that one's just sort of out of out of people's minds right now. Uh, and there will be plenty of chances for Microsoft to remind people what that game is all about. But the, the possibility of a new Bioshock, we know it's from a new development team. So I hope they're able to carry it on just as well as like the new generation of id software. You know, not the original guys who've kind of all moved on was able to do such a great job of bringing back and reinventing Doom. I hope we get a yeah. similar, you know, a similar creative uh, just explosion from this from this new team that really reinvigorates Bioshock and brings that back. I, I can't argue with our our poll voters in that. Uh, a new Bioshock definitely has a lot of potential. Yeah, that's a tall order to have to come into the fourth entry in that game series, so I wish them nothing but the best. Uh, our new poll for next time, what game do you hope to see at Gamescom next week? Uh, I think I already know what everyone's going to answer, but I'm going to read them anyway. Elden Ring, Far Cry 6, Horizon Forbidden West, Halo Infinite, Call of Duty Vanguard or other, of course. We love the others. We talk about it in the comments. So, uh, Ryan, Jonathan, thank you so much for uh, helping me to get through this very first nerve wracking uh, time that I hosted such a, a big and important video game program. But that will do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. So, again, thank you both. We will be back next Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more. PS5 and Xbox Series X news. See you then.